Believe it or not, we have just passed the halfway point of 2022. I don't know how that happened, but here we are. And let me tell you, as far as movies go, this first half of the year has been surprisingly exciting. There are so many really good films that came out, and there are even a few that I'm pretty sure are going to stick around in most people's top 10s at the end of the year. I don't even know if my current number one movie is movable at this point, but we'll get there. Today, I wanted to take a look at some of the best films this year had to offer so far, but instead of just ranking them, I decided to put them into some fun categories. So let's begin. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. X is my favorite horror film of the year, and this is not something I expected to be saying about this movie. I've seen a few of Ty West's movies before, and while I always found his work interesting, I was never really blown away. So when it came to X, especially after seeing the trailer, I expected it to be pretty good, but not really something I would want to watch more than once. Surprise! I was so wrong. What I love about this one is that it finds that perfect balance between being entertaining and being a horror movie. It has a great, often dark sense of humor, it has characters you want to root for, it has an awesome, memorable final girl because yes, X is a slasher and you have to have one and it also has some gruesome kills. On top of that, while it's definitely reminiscent of the iconic The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's a refreshingly original film and Ty West clearly knows what makes this subgenre work. I've seen it twice now, and I will definitely be watching it again. X is equal parts fun, scary, horny, and gory, which are all things you want a movie like this to be. Now, give me that prequel already. There already are quite a few movies flying under the radar this year, but the one that stands out the most to me is The Outfit. I truly believe that most people would enjoy this movie, so if you haven't seen it, you're definitely missing out. Do you like thrillers? How about crime thrillers? How about one location crime thrillers, where every character has an agenda and is trying to end up on top of the situation, because that is exactly exactly what the outfit is, and it's set in 1950s Chicago in a small tailor shop where Mark Rylance makes fancy clothes for gangsters. See, I told you you're missing out. This movie has it all to make a bottle thriller work. A great cast, smart writing, some great tension and suspense, plenty of twists and turns to keep you on your toes and it uses its setting and time period really well. I can also confidently tell you that it features one of my favorite Mark Rylance performances to date. The outfit is gripping from beginning to end, and while eventually it does ask you to suspend your disbelief a bit, the mind games it plays with you and the payoff in the third act are absolutely worth your time. And speaking of time, we all know it is something you can never get back. I'm someone who always has 1001 things I want to do, so using my time well has become incredibly important to me. This is where today's sponsor Skillshare has really been helping me out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for you to explore and get started on whatever is next in your personal growth journey. And with new premium classes added every week, you will always have have something new to discover. Whether you're looking to pick up a new hobby, infuse your work with more creativity, get started on what you've always wanted to learn, or simply improve your daily life, Skillshare has a class for you. Personally, I'm a big fan of Thomas Frank's classes, and most recently, he's been helping me stay organized and achieve my goals with his class, Mastering Productivity, Create a Custom System That Works, because yes, it does work. And I am confident that Skillshare classes will spark your curiosity and creativity as well, just like they do for me. The first 1,000 people to use my link below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So don't hesitate. Join Skillshare today and let me know what you're excited to start learning about next. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. 
you knew this one was coming because yes, Austin Butler is that good and I will take any opportunity I can to talk about his incredible performance in one of my favorite movies of the year. Although really, what is there left to say that hasn't been said already? Austin Butler is fantastic in this role and after seeing the film for the second time, I'm even more blown away, if that's even possible, by his performance and his commitment to portraying Elvis in this biopic. I am not exaggerating when I say I forgot I was watching an actor in a role. His performance felt so real, genuine, and authentic. The singing, the physicality, the charisma, the emotion, it's all there. And the second Austin Butler is not on screen, you want him back because he truly is magnetic in this role. I'm going to stop gushing because I can do this for a very long time, but I think you get the point. If you need more, watch my review, but this is easily the performance of the year for me. When was the last time you saw a film that made you feel hopeful and inspired about life? A film that left you happier than you were before you started. Because for me, that was everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes, I know, I still haven't made a video about it, and I do see you guys asking for it, but my love for this film has actually made it difficult to express my feelings. There is so much I want to say because it really did live up to its title. I felt like like it actually gave me everything, everywhere, and all at once. It was an unforgettable experience, and I felt just as strongly about it on my second viewing. Not only is it the most wonderful cinematic take on the multiverse, which is already a topic I love seeing portrayed on screen, but it is also a movie with an overwhelming amount of heart that just transcends space and time, and you guys know how I feel about great movies that have a lot of heart. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it inspired me, it made me feel like anything is possible, and it gave me hope that as crazy, overwhelming, and sometimes cruel as this world can seem, there is still room to choose hope and love. Now how about that for your movie experience? So I'm just going to continue on this emotional roller coaster, and to be honest, I could easily talk about Elvis or Everything Everywhere all at once here because those two made me cry quite a bit. But I want to draw your attention to another underrated gem that really spoke to me. You Won't Be Alone. While technically a horror movie, You Won't Be Alone can be difficult to describe as it sits somewhere between a folk horror film and a dark fairy tale. The story is set in 19th century Macedonia and is about a shape-shifting witch who is experiencing humanity. It's a stunning, melancholy meditation on how beautiful life can be even when it comes to small things we don't notice but also how cruel. If it sounds like a film you need to be in a certain mood for, it's because it definitely is, and for that reason, it's not going to be a film for everyone. However, I love a good meditation on the human experience, so You Won't Be Alone is something I really connected with emotionally. It just spoke to me, and it definitely managed to break my heart along the way. Cannot recommend this enough if this sounds like your kind of movie. Do you guys love it when I try to sell you on films by saying they're going to break your heart? If you get it, you get it though, because that's pretty much how I'm sold on movies. Alright, at this point we all know I love horror movies, right? I talk about them all the time and actually almost half of my top 10 at the moment consists of horror movies. So it's only fitting that I would include the scariest film of the year and for me that is Incantation. This film scared the hell out of me. It really got under my skin and while horror is a very individual thing, I would argue that this would make most people at the very least highly uncomfortable. Incantation Incantation is a Taiwanese found footage horror film, but it is far from your stereotypical shaky cam, not much happens until there is a jump scare kind of movie. This one goes after its viewers from the very beginning, and its non-linear storytelling will keep you watching as the full picture comes together. The story revolves around a curse and a mother trying to help her daughter, and while you might recognize shades of the ring in 
in certain aspects of this film, it's also inspired by a true story. As far as the scares, the movie has it all. Creepy footage, unsettling ideas, hidden cameras, ghost hunting, and yes, some jump scares, though thankfully, it doesn't rely on them. Personally, I found this movie to be way too effective as a horror film, and there is no way I'm watching it again, so it definitely deserves its spot as the scariest movie of the year so far. Alright, let's switch it up and talk about something sweet and wholesome, a movie that really did feel like a warm hug to me, and that is Cha-Cha Real Smooth. There is a special place in my heart for indie dramedies that heal your soul, and this is definitely one of them. The story is about Andrew, a recent college graduate who still has some growing up to do as he isn't quite sure about his future or what he should do with his life. Life. He encounters a slightly older woman with a 12-year-old daughter, and this sends him on quite a journey of self-discovery. Cha-Cha Real Smooth is one of those bittersweet films that are just a really good, heartwarming experience. It's a movie about getting your life together and how this idea is really a lifelong journey at any age rather than a goal you can set a time frame for. Humans are complicated, flawed, and and different from one another, and that's okay. That's part of the beauty of our existence, which is never perfect. At least, that's what I got from Chacha Real Smooth. I'm clearly in a very interesting mood this year. It's either horror and thrillers or the meaning of life for me, as far as movies go. That's where I am in 2022. I have gotten so many requests to watch and talk about RRR, and I'm so glad I finally watched it. It is a very long Indian film, but those three hours are so worth it because it truly is a wild ride. This is a historical action drama, musical, blockbuster? Yes, you heard that right, and I don't think you're going to see anything quite like it this year. Chances are you really haven't seen anything quite like this ever, unless you really like to get adventurous and you watch a lot of different international films. But RRR has it all. Friendship, romance, drama, high stakes, action, singing, dancing, tigers, awesome visuals, and the list goes on. It's a lot, and it's over the top in the best way possible. It actually took me about 20 minutes to really get into it and to appreciate what this movie is trying to do, but the further I watched, the more on board I was, and by the halfway point, I was not just sold on it, I was cheering, I was 100% invested, I was having an amazing time, and I honestly would have watched another hour of this movie if that was an option. It's so entertaining. Let me put it this way, if you're someone like me who often complains about how formulaic blockbusters are, how they're just the next in installment in the franchise, how they lack inspiration and creativity, here you go, watch this movie. Speaking of franchises, while I'm usually someone who tends to ignore sequels when it comes to favorites because I just don't have that much interest in franchises, there was one sequel this year that completely blew me away. I am of course talking about Top Gun Maverick, which is easily the most fun summer blockbuster in years. I was very skeptical going into this film and questioning why they felt the need to make it after all this time but having seen it twice in theaters, I can confidently tell you that this is one of the must-watch movies of the year, and if you can see it on the big screen, you absolutely should. Top Gun Maverick embraces everything people loved about the original Top Gun and celebrates it. It respects the genre and its viewers, it respects the characters, it lets Tom Cruise shine as the movie star he is, and it delivers some of the the most breathtaking action of the year. I've said it in my review and I'll say it again, it's one of those rare sequels that surpass the original. But I think I also now understand how the people who got to watch the first movie on the big screen felt. Not every successful movie needs a sequel, but if Hollywood is going to do them, Top Gun Maverick is the way. 
And that brings me to my favorite film of the year, which, as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't think is going to get dethroned at this point. That is how strongly I feel about my number one film of 2022. Actually, let me give you a top three for some context, although if you've been watching my channel, I'm sure you can guess what these are. At number three, it's Top Gun Maverick. As I said, one of the must-watch movies of the year and simply a really great time. At number two, it's Elvis, which is a movie I adored even more on my second viewing and would watch again in a heartbeat. These two were actually reversed at first, but after I saw it again, I just went with my heart and I put Elvis ahead of Maverick. And at number one, it's none other than everything, everywhere, all at once. I cannot even begin to explain how much this film meant to me and how it made me feel. I am just happy that this movie exists and it is undoubtedly joining the ranks of my all-time favorites. I get emotional just talking about it and the more I think about it, the more I love it. This is the only film I gave a 10 out of 10 to this year so far and it more than deserves it. I will try to do my best to contain my thoughts and feelings on everything, everywhere, all at once into a video before the year ends, but for now, be kind and stay away from everything bagels.